welcome students, parents, sponsors to the sixth and the last lesson in preparation for confirmation. The title of this lesson is the Sacrament of Confirmation. Let me now share my screen. In this lesson, we're going to examine what happens when you're confirmed and what it means. Let's start with a prayer. This is the song, Come Holy Ghost. Uh, if you would, please join me in praying it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Ghost, creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made, to fill the hearts which thou hast made. O comforter, to thee we cry, thou heavenly gift of God most high, thou font of life and fire of love, and sweet, sweet anointing from above, and sweet anointing from above. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go back to the first lesson that we studied on baptism. In it, and in the lesson on the Eucharist, we defined what a sacrament is. As I hope you will recall, here is the classic definition. It's an outward sign. In other words, the fact that the sacrament is happening is experienced through the senses. It's given to us by Jesus. A sacrament is entrusted to the church. The church celebrates the sacraments as a way to continue the ministry of Jesus, and it gives grace. It's an encounter with God. It changes us by giving us the life of God within us. In this lesson on confirmation, we're going to ask, what is the grace that this sacrament gives us, the gift that it gives us? In the lesson for today, I want to focus especially on the sign of the sacrament of confirmation. Perhaps I should properly say signs, the plural, because there's more than one sign. The sign of any sacrament is not arbitrary. The sign itself tells us something about what the sacrament means and the grace that it gives. To illustrate this, let's look at the sacraments that we studied in lessons one and two. So for baptism in lesson one, we studied it. What is the sign that baptism is taking place? It's an immersion or washing with water together with the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In lesson one, I suggested that one of the graces of baptism is that it gives us Jesus as our compass in life. We are made his followers, his disciples. Let's also apply this to the Eucharist. In the Eucharist, the sign is bread and wine offered to God with the community of believers gathered around an altar table. What is the grace of the sacrament? Of course, the words of that are remembrance, words of remembrance and thanks. Do this in memory of me. And the grace, of course, is then that it provides us a way of receiving the very body and blood of Jesus and sharing in his divine life as nourishment for our weak ahead to follow Jesus. In other words, the Eucharist gives us food and drink week by week so that we can follow Jesus as his disciples. In our previous lessons, we also looked at the call to holiness. With Jesus, we have a guide in life and we have nourishment for the journey. We also have a destination, life to the full now and eternal, eternally with God. The saints, inspire us to aim for holiness in our lives, these holy ones of God. You will take the name of a saint in your confirmation. Then we looked at the Holy Spirit. We suggested then that we know the Holy Spirit, especially by the effects of what happens in us and around us by the grace of God through the Holy Spirit. We discussed how to recognize the grace of the Holy Spirit. The symbols of wind and fire help us understand what the Holy Spirit does. 
the Holy Spirit is present when we're inspired with the word, wind of words that are powerful or the wind of strength to face problems. The Holy Spirit is at work when we are on fire with faith and courage. One way to describe what the Holy Spirit does is that it makes us alive in Jesus. Then we looked at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit inspires things in us, we believe that there are specific and special gifts of the Holy Spirit. These specific gifts are known from the prophet Isaiah, and they are wisdom, understanding, right judgment, courage, awe and wonder, knowledge, and reverence. God also wants us to recognize and use the gifts that make us who we are and to be our best selves. The Holy Spirit is the grace, the inspiration that helps us know and use these gifts that we have been given. Now, let's look at the signs of confirmation. As I said before, there's more than one. I'll focus on four aspects of the sign of confirmation. First, there is the laying on of hands. The bishop, together with any priest or present, will extend his hands over those to be, to be confirmed. The bishop may also put his hand on top of your head as he applies the sacred chrism to your forehead. Another sign of the sacrament of confirmation is the sign of the cross. When the bishop applies the oil to your forehead, he will do this in the shape of a cross. So that means there's another sign, mean, namely oil. In the sacrament of confirmation, olive oil that is consecrated by the bishop is used. The oil is applied to the forehead. And lastly, another sign is perfume. The oil that the bishop consecrates has balsam, a type of scent that is made from the resin of balsam trees. It has a pleasant smell. And when oil and balsam are mixed and blessed, it is called chrism. Now you need to ask, what is God saying to you through these signs, the laying on of hands, oil, cross, perfume? I asked you to do an exercise before viewing this video. If you have not completed it yet, stop the video and take about 15 minutes to complete it. You can find the instructions for it on the parish website page for confirmation resources. In the exercise, I asked you to examine each of the signs separately and to reflect on what they mean. Ultimately, I ask you to write down what you think God is trying to say to you through the sign. I'll let you stop here if you need to and do that exercise, and then you'll pick up again. Okay, let's talk about each of the signs. First, the laying on of hands. The gesture associated with invoking the Holy Spirit over anything or anyone that we want the Holy Spirit to come. We will raise our hands over it or lay our hands on it. It is an ancient gesture. It is seen when the priest holds his hands over the bread and wine on the altar. Here are the words he uses. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The bishop also lays hands on the head of a man who is being ordained a priest. It is a gesture that asks for the Holy Spirit to fill the candidate and to make him a priest. A priest also lays hands on a person who is sick before anointing the sick person. Again, it is a gesture that asks the Holy Spirit to fill the person with comfort and healing. So when the bishop lays hands over you at your confirmation or extends his hands over you, he's asking the Holy Spirit to come upon you in a special way. If we were to put words in God's mouth, some ways to identify what God is saying through this gesture might be, receive the Holy Spirit, or I want to empower you. There may be other answers as well. The cross is traced on your forehead with oil, specifically olive oil, that is blessed by the bishop. Oil has more than one meaning in the tradition, just as it has different uses in our experience. 
We use oils or salves to help heal sores or wounds. This is the meaning of the sacrament for anointing of the sick. It is a symbol of healing. Oil also has the symbolism of strength. I think this is the primary meaning of the oil used in confirmation. So perhaps one way to express what God is saying through the oil is simply, let my spirit give you strength. The cross, the bishop will trace the chrism on your forehead in the sign of a cross. Perhaps what this is saying is, the sacrament, this sacrament will help you take up your cross and follow after my son. Or another way of saying it might be, the more you trust in the cross of my son and live faithfully as his disciple, the more the Holy Spirit can be unleashed in you. In other words, there's a connection to Jesus himself in his dying and rising, living out your baptism, living out your calling to follow after him. Finally, the oil has fragrance, the fragrance of balsam in it. When you wear a cologne or a perfume, it is usually when you're going to a special event. It helps make the wearer more pleasant. So perfume in the oil suggests being made or declared pleasing. You smell good is how we might describe someone who is confirmed. And you actually will smell good. Now think back to your first lesson when we looked at the baptism of Jesus. After Jesus was baptized, he heard the father tell him, you are my beloved son. In you, I am well pleased. When Jesus was willing to take up his ministry and submit to the death and resurrection of baptism, he experienced the Father telling him how delighted he was in Jesus. It was a moment of profound encouragement for him, especially as he ventured into his ministry and ultimately was persecuted for his ministry. Some ways to express how God is sending you a message in confirmation then are, I delight in you or in you, I am well pleased. So to put it all together, what is God trying to say to you in your confirmation? Receive the Holy Spirit. I want to empower you. This sacrament will help you take up your cross and follow after my son. When you trust in the cross of my son and live faithfully as disciples of him, the more the Holy Spirit can be unleashed in you. My spirit will give you strength. I delight in you, and you I am well pleased. If we were to summarize the grace of the sacrament, I wonder if the best way to say what it is that God is saying to you is the same thing he said to his son, I love you. It's always wonderful to hear this phrase from people who love us. It truly does give empowerment. It truly gives us strength. It gives us courage to be more generous with our gifts. But in confirmation, God is saying it to you. It is a divine expression of love. And it is a message and power that can echo in you for the rest of your life if you keep it in your heart. Now let's look at the words of confirmation. Here is what the bishop and you will say as you are confirmed. The bishop will use your saint's name. Let's suppose you choose the name of of Martha. So he would say, Martha, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and you'll respond, amen. Then he'll reach down to shake your hand and say, peace be with you, and you'll respond, and with your spirit. There's one word, I think, that especially needs some explanation in these phrases. What does it mean to be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Let's talk about seals. The word seal means to be marked or made official. In the ancient world, a seal was often a piece of wax or lead or other material with an individual design, often coming from the ring of the king or someone who was, had a position of authority, stamped into it and attached then to a document to show that it had come from the person who claims to have issued it. So being sealed with the Holy Spirit means that you have been changed forever. It's a permanent mark on the soul. You've been stamped with the fact that you have been confirmed. 
you will never not be a confirmed follower of Jesus. Whether you keep it in mind or not, you will forever have this I love you to keep with you because you have been indelibly marked with that expression of love. And in a certain sense, the message then becomes, continue to follow my son. I love you, continue to follow him, just as I loved him. And I will unleash gifts in you, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So what does confirmation add to our lives? Here is what I'd like you to walk away with from what we've studied so far. In baptism, we're given a compass, namely Jesus. In our call to holiness, we're given a destination to become like Jesus, to live forever with him in eternity. In the Eucharist, we're given food for that journey. The Holy Spirit gives us a wind at our back on our journey. The Holy Spirit gives us a fire within us to keep us going. And the Holy Spirit gives us gifts to use on our journey. So the Holy Spirit and the sacrament of confirmation as I've suggested already, makes us alive in Christ. It gives us a permanent promise. And you can always trust in the promise that confirmation makes for you, that you can live your life alive in Christ and full of powerful gifts to help you serve God's kingdom. Now I'd like to tell you a story about me and that will, I hope will help you understand how confirmation is a resource for life. And I'm going to stop the sharing at this point. About 12 years ago, I went on a retreat in Arizona. It took place in the high desert outside of Tucson at a camp. It was a beautiful area. Although it would get cold at night, every day was spectacular with blue skies that were clear. On the last day of the retreat, each of the participants were told to go alone and find a secluded place. Once we found a place we were supposed to draw a circle around us, you know, maybe 10 feet in diameter, where we would sit. And we were not supposed to leave that circle for at least six hours. We were there to wait for the encounter with God in that circle. I found a spot under a small tree on a hilltop. I had a beautiful view of mountains off in the distance across a valley. And uh, during that time, we were to pray and meditate on the message of the retreat. We also had several envelopes with us that we were to open one every hour with a brief message in it that, we would, that would perhaps help us to, to reflect upon the message of the retreat. We would open them one at a time each hour. After about an hour of prayer, on this beautiful day, I noticed there were clouds forming off in the distance. Uh, this was the first time I had seen anything other than blue skies the entire time during this retreat. And I thought, well, I hope this bad weather would remain far away because it seemed very distant. During the next hour, though, the sky started to become very threatening. I began to realize that the, a storm definitely seemed to be approaching. I began to wonder, should I leave my spot? Should I go back into shelter and stay I or, or stay? I, I decided ultimately I'm gonna stay. As the storm became really threatening, another hour passed and I opened another envelope and the message in the envelope said simply, you are not in control. And I thought, you got that right <laughs> at this moment in my life. Uh, during the next hour, the storm arrived. It rained, lightning was flashing around me, thunder, of course, following. The wind was very strong. It was very cold. It began not just to rain, but to sleet and drop ice on me. I, I, I huddled with a, with a baseball hat in my head and my fleece jacket, uh, trying to keep warm, I put my backpack on to kind of protect my, my back and keep it a little bit warmer. And I sat on the, under the tree on top of a hill 
exactly the kind of place that the Boy Scouts would tell you, do not be at during a lightning storm. I, I, so I, I, I was just hunkering down during this experience when the storm with, in all its fury was being unleashed around me. In the middle of it though, I realized I needed to express my trust. I was being called to trust in God in the middle of all this. And so I, I just felt moved and I shouted out, I trust you, God. And it was a great moment of letting go. Uh, in another 15 minutes or so, the storm began to pass away and, and, and depart. Uh, one moment it was there, the next moment it was gone. And incredibly within minutes, the skies were absolutely clear blue again. Now here's the point of the story. Before I left after six hours, uh, I decided to pick up a rock on the ground near me where I was sitting. Um, here is that rock. Uh, I have kept this rock since then. I've kept it as a reminder that when there are storms in my life, I need to let go and trust in God. I'm in God's hands and I don't need to worry. I do worry, but I, I call out to God, I trust you and it helps. Uh, I hope I can learn to trust more and more over the years. This is literally a touchstone for me, a reminder of an important message that I need to remember frequently over the course of the year. So this is like a touchstone, something you, you could literally touch and remind yourself of an important message of something you need to remember and keep in mind because it's important. And this is one of my touchstones in life. Let me bring this uh, to a close then. Your confirmation is a touchstone that will be with you forever. Let me bring back the screen again. Your confirmation is a resource for life. It's not just a one-time event. You are changed forever. You are sealed with a promise to unleash the Spirit's gifts in you. And when your life seems to be stuck or not bearing fruit, remember what God has done for you in confirmation. You can have a life filled with gifts. The key to that is to follow Jesus and to trust in the promise that was made to you in your confirmation. You have to have faith to be able to feel the force of the Holy Spirit in your life. God respects you enough to not want to force you to believe or do anything. But God is always and already present and waiting to welcome you home if you stray. God's Holy Spirit is always ready to empower you if you want to be empowered. If this appeals to you, if you want the Holy Spirit to empower your life, you do have to want it. I hope after looking more closely at this sacrament through this preparation process that you do want it. Just a few reminders. At the next family carpool on December 2nd, we'll give you the registration form for the, next, for the confirmation retreat. Um, you can return the accountability sheets for lessons five and six or any others that you need to turn in. By then you should also have completed the interview of your sponsor. The interview sheet and accountability sheets can be found on the confirmation resources page of the parish website if you need new copies. On January 6th, we will ask for you to return at the family carpool then to return your registration for the confirmation retreat. The confirmation retreat itself takes place on Saturday, January 16th. We'll have more details about the time that day. It's a Saturday. Um, and I encourage you to attend the Saturday evening mass after the confirmation retreat. Again, we are still awaiting word of when confirmation will be. We have requested from the bishop uh, to have two evenings in April.
between the dates of April 19th and April 30th from the bishop when he will come and do confirmation. We need to do confirmation in two masses if we have all of our approximately 50 candidates be confirmed because by in allowing each family to invite six members, six people, including your sponsor to come, in addition to the candidate, we need to have a split confirmation. So we're still waiting for the bishop word. As soon as we receive word from the which eating the bishop will come, we'll let you know. Again, I hope you've gotten a lot out of the preparation process. God bless you. And I'll see you at the carpools, at mass, and at the retreat. Bye-bye.